Today's Saturday Spotlight is Pink After Blue. She is a fourth grade teacher with a family and she does a lot of family vlogs. She also does things for the classroom. So if you have not checked out her channel, I encourage you to do so. The link is down below. Good morning and happy Sunday. I didn't film at all on Saturday because I was so busy. I did make some things for my classroom and I'll share those with you in a little bit. But we had to go pick up our daughter. So she was coming back from Kansas from over a week with my brother and we needed to meet her part way. So that's what we spent most of our day doing yesterday. I am just sitting here printing and laminating posters for my first Rooted in Reading lesson. So let me show you what I've got here. So obviously it's all about connections. I've got these four posters made. I've got Text to World. I have Text to Self. And I have Text to Text. And then why, what happens when readers make connections. So these will go up on probably our whiteboard whenever we're talking about these things or maybe on my easel so that the students can access these while we're using them for the lesson and then they will probably go on my reading bulletin board maybe perhaps I'm not really sure but these will be out as long as we need them and I can always put them around the room on the walls if I need to to help them remember the different types of connections that we will make when we read let me show you some of the other things I've been working on. So I'm going to be doing the Great Pencil Challenge. And I saw a post on Pinterest and I went, I can make that sign and the pencils for the little pocket chart. So I made my own version of the sign. This will go above the chart or somewhere around the chart. And then each student has their own little pencil to put into one of those little dollar spot, $3 pocket charts, just the regular ones. Like I have my super improvers cards in. And I'll have to find a place to hang that in my classroom, but we're going to keep track of who keeps track of their pencils every Friday. And if they do, they're going to be getting some kind of reward. I haven't completely decided what it's going to be. We may just upgrade pencils for a while. So right now they're going to start with just the regular yellow number two pencils. And then we'll check it on Friday. So they only have to keep track of them for four days. They'll check them on Friday. Actually, my daughter will be responsible for checking their little pouches on Friday. So they'll get a pencil pouch, just a normal zippy pencil pouch. They were all supposed to bring one. I have name labels to stick to them. They will get six pencils already sharpened in their pouch, just plain yellow ones. And they don't sharpen through the week. Now, if their pencils all break and they can borrow a pencil, their pencils will have their number on them. I'm just going to take like at the top here, just use a Sharpie and put their number like right here on their actual pencil. Or I might use flags. I did that last year and it worked pretty well, but that's going to be a lot of flags. Six pencils times 22 kids. That's a lot of flags. So I think I'll just use Sharpie and have their numbers on there. And at the end of the week, my daughter will check them while I have my after school meeting. We have, um, it's our version of PLC to talk about students and, you know, progression of work and to collaborate. She will check each pencil pouch. She will count their pencils. I'll have a little sheet for her to mark. Did they have them or didn't they? And then if they did, they'll get some kind of, I might have a punch card or something just for the pencils. Like I said, I haven't completely decided because there are different ways you can do this pencil challenge. And um, at the end of whatever period we might do like just to start out with, we might do at the end of the month because it's new and they're young and they're just coming back from summer. So we might just do it for basically two weeks because we'll just have school in August for two weeks. We'll probably do that and then there'll be some kind of a reward for keeping your pencils till then. And we'll just go from there. I was thinking maybe their first reward would be getting a fancy pencil, like they could choose a fancy pencil to put in their pouch to replace one of the yellow ones or maybe just have an extra as a fancy pencil. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. But hopefully this will cut down on students breaking the erasers off the pencils, snapping the pencils, not picking them up off the floor, and then they don't have their pencil. Also, they'll have pencils when they go to interventions, which start after Labor Day. So they'll have two weeks to practice keeping their pencils until then. 
So hopefully this will help things out. Now for intervention time, I will have the bucket of pencils out and I'll also have them out for my students if they, I mean, obviously I'm not going to let them go without having a pencil, but it will affect their reward. But I don't want them to, I don't want it to affect their work. This is supposed to keep them in pencils for the whole week and avoid having to sharpen all the time. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I got that done. The other thing that I got done was the little note from Edit the Eraser for Unlock Back to School. So in here, there's a little letter from Edit the Eraser about the challenges that they're going to be doing. And each I showed you in my classroom, each one is a different school supply. And so their game pieces are little backpacks that are go going to go around the game board. So I'm going to set that up on Monday, tomorrow. So you'll see that next weekend and you'll see all kinds of back to school activities that we do or that we did at that point. You'll get to see everything. But here's just a little sneak peek of that. And this is really cool because it comes in the file. It's already made here and obviously you just put your own little thing on here and you print it out and you fold it and tape it. I'm not even gonna tape it down. And then you print the little uh, note and fold it up in here and it's waiting in the classroom or you can have someone deliver it you could have like the secretary bring it down oh mrs bond we got this in the mail today i'll be like oh cool what is it and then that starts your challenge so that's pretty cool and then i think that's it that i got done i did get some planning done um let me show you my planner because it's really awesome it's the One Fab Teacher Planner from Miss May. I love it. So this is just a notebook I bought from Staples a few years ago because I'm gonna arc punch all my things. So like she said in her video, if you haven't watched it, you should check it out. She says in her video to use the heavier paper. I think it's, what, 95 weight or something. Yeah, I have HP Premium Choice uh, Laser Jet Paper. It's very smooth and it's thicker it's kind of like in between regular copy paper and cardstock, which is nice. Okay, this page is made with cardstock because it's going to be flipped all the time since it's the cover. But then I just printed this on Astro Brights, so I got my kids' birthdays. In here, I've got my year at a glance. I'm going to put down, you know, all the major themes and things that I want to hit. Then here's my divider for August. And I just made a whole list of activities I want to do for the first week of school. See, lots and lots of stuff. Okay. And then she did not have um, pages for our first week of school. So what I did was I screenshot the planning pages for the next week. And then I put a text box in and covered up the number that she had there because it started with 27. Put a zero. I should have made it bigger. It doesn't completely match, but it works for me. And I finished off the week because we start school here. I just used some washi tape to put in my specials time and my lunch and recess time so I could divide out my subjects. And then I just started plugging in some of the activities that I want to do. Like I want to do the first unlock challenge on Tuesday and two more challenges on Wednesday, two more on Thursday and the last one on Friday because I want to finish it up because the next week, which is back here, I'm going to be just, well, I think I've flipped too many pages. The next week I'm going to be starting, here we go, I'll be starting everything normal. Like we're gonna start normal math, normal reading, normal everything, except for a little bit of testing. I just took labels, those, it's the Avery labels that have 80 to a sheet. They are four rows of 20 tiny little labels. I think I showed you those when I showed you the kids' name labels that I made for something. Plus um, that little uh, clothespin clip thing that I stuck above my lunch and attendance cards by my door for the kids to clip their card when they're leaving the room for library or office or nurse or restroom. It's the same size labels as that. I don't know what the number is. I think there are different kinds. Hi, Mingle. She came to say hi. I just uh, made the pages colorful. So I just saturated the page with color basically. And then I went on the blank labels and I put which subject I wanted on there and I printed them out. And then you do have to cut them down about that much, just a little bit, snip a little bit off the end so it fits. Thank you, baby. 
on the end. <laughs> okay, she's a little feisty. Anyway, and I just put it like in rainbow order because I like these colors. So I've got Power Hour, which doesn't actually start till the following week. And then I've got Math. I've got Reader's Workshop. I have Writing. I have Science and Social Studies. And I have Extras. And this would be like small group things. Um, if there's an assembly, just all kinds of stuff. So I figured this could fit all sorts of things. I don't always necessarily write down what I'm doing for small groups because it just kind of is its own thing. And really for, <clears throat> excuse me, for like ma guided math, it's going to have its own planner because that's a whole other thing. I wouldn't be able to fit all the information on one page no matter what kind of planner I had for that. So my small group math and possibly my reading probably will have its own thing. Those uh, planners I got from the Target Dollar Spot, they were like $3. That is what I'm using for those. So that's a separate deal. But you could print them out and just put another page in here, which would be really handy. I love how the planner always has like a to-do list. And it has beautiful little quotes at the bottom. I love it. It's so thorough. She really did an awesome job. And I love that there's, there's a like kind of a to-do page at the beginning, if I can find it. I think I printed the... Let's see if I can get it without taking forever. Eh, I had to kind of do mine weird. There we go. Okay, so August goals. So you can write down all the things that you want to accomplish. And then you can kind of see if you did accomplish them, what went well, what you would change. And then you can move on to September. And you can have your goals for that. So that's pretty cool. So September looks normal. I printed my August one kind of weird. <laughs> But here's my September. I haven't written anything in here, obviously, because I just got this. So I have labeled all the way through November, I think. I think I've labeled through November. I've only printed through November. But yeah, I've got everything labeled through. This is kind of like what people do in their Erin Condren planners, too, just to make them more colorful. It just helps me to break up the subjects like that. This paper is so smooth, people. It's so smooth. Okay, and look. I love these little quotes. She has great little touches through the whole thing. It's really nice. I really love it. And I love that I could take these out. If I make a boo-boo, I could reprint. Because, <laughs> you know, that's how I am. So this is really cool. And then I have notes back here. Now this, this thing here that I have from Staples was a notebook. So instead of printing all the note pages that she has, I printed a few of those because they're super cute. But for like meeting notes and such, I'll probably just use the notebook paper that came with this. Just because it's already here. I took a whole bunch of it out, so I'd have plenty of room. Now, just like her, this is so cool, because we did not talk to each other about how we were going to put our binders together, our teacher planners, and she bound hers, too. So that's really cool. Okay, so I've got a note that I need to copy. So I have these little sleeve things, and I got these at Staples. And I love how you can just pop them in. So my class list is wrong, I think. No, my class list is right. My schedule is wrong because I've changed stuff. <laughs> so I'll be printing a new one at school. Hey, Mingle. And then I've got my dismissal list and my uh, information for each student. Oops. Oh, boom. She went on the floor. These are for the pickup passes, like what number they are, and then their parents' names. These are, this is a blank one, a couple blank ones for more information. These are all of the labels that I'll use. I can't get a hold of it. See, I put all the labels, there are six sets in here so I don't lose them. So I can print more, or I could just write them too. I can hand write them. Because I will tell you that on mine, the ink smeared a little bit because I originally printed it at school and it has a shinier kind of a printing because it's a different type of ink. And it didn't work super great. Let me just show you. I don't know if you can tell. See, I just hand wrote these because I added that in later. I wasn't going to make planning pages for the first week of school because it's back to school stuff. It's all procedures. How do you do this? How do you do this? Practice, practice, practice. But I thought, you know, I want something. I want to map it out somehow. And this is kind of like my practice pages <laughs> until I get into the real ones. So anyway, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but some of them are a little schmeary. These aren't too bad, I don't think. But um, yeah, I may just handwrite the subjects on the next labels with a Sharpie or something, or maybe an Ink Joy. I don't know. We'll see. But I've got it, you know, ready to go through October or through November, rather. Sorry. Yeah. 
and uh, I should be good. Be good to go for a while. So hopefully I can get myself planned. I love these printable sticky notes. These are amazing because I can take it out of here and put it on my desk where I will see it and remember to do it. <laughs> and then I can slap it back in here so I can add more to it. She is just all over me today. Hello. Yeah, because Caitlin's still asleep, isn't she? And you got to pester me. Yes, stinker. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to get back to it. I am sure I have more things to print and more things to plan. So I will chat with you later. Ooh, something else I need to tell you. So we ordered a replacement screen for my iPhone from Amazon. And my husband was able to put it on last night. And it works. I'm so excited. Look, it works. And I can use my fingerprint ID now and everything. It's so awesome. I'm getting all kinds of notifications. Very cool. Look at that. I'm so excited. So cool. Everything works. At first, we weren't sure. It was a little scary. See, but now it works. It's so pretty. And it even came with one of those glass protective covers. So I put that on here. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you can kind of see now. See where the line is right here? It's right on the edge. Yeah, so I put that on there to kind of protect it a little more. Now, I'm not going to have these this foam laying around where the kids can knock it on the floor anymore, so it should be fine. And then I didn't have to change my case or anything. And then I can wait a little bit to get a new phone because they're expensive. I would like to get a new one for the storage, but maybe for my birthday, which is in September. So we'll see. But it's gorgeous. I love it. All right. I have been a busy little bee. It is 11 o'clock. I've been working on this since like 730 I have the first eight weeks of Rooted in Reading ready to go. All my lesson materials for me, I just need to print out the student materials, which I will do at school on the copier. So I'm going to do that on Monday, print a whole bunch of that stuff because I can print just class sets of whatever papers we might need. And then I'll stick them in these little things here and those will go in those rainbow drawers that I got from Michael's that are over by my desk so I'll just give you an example of one of them this is Edward the emu so I've got all of the little posters little anchor chart posters here predictions then I have the questioning cards I need to cut out then I have the vocabulary cards and the definitions I need to cut out <laughs> And then I have the grammar poster, whatever we're working on for grammar. We're talking about how you write a sentence, which makes sense the first time that you're talking about writing. So that's week one. And we'll start that the first week, definitely. I won't start it Tuesday, but I will start it Wednesday. Do a little bit of this, and then we'll work through the rest of the week on this, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then we'll go to week two, which is the Invisible Boy, and continue on. Now, I'm not sure if I'll stay in the months because there are four, you can see on here, there are four books for each month. You can see here there are four weeks for each month and we don't have four weeks in August. So I will probably bleed into September and then September may bleed into October a little bit. Or maybe I will do just a couple days of each lesson and then move on. Or maybe three days, I don't know. We can, I mean, I can split it up into two weeks. Do like three books in two weeks instead of two books in two weeks. It depends on the book. And it depends on what we're doing and what we're working on and how much time we have. So we'll just have to see. But I'm going to have to fudge it a little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to be way, way behind. And some of the books won't have anything to do with what month I'm in. So I'll get it figured out. I've never used this program before, but I've heard amazing things about it. And so I'm very excited because this will give the comprehension piece that students need and also the grammar piece that students need and a little bit of writing tips too because it talks about complete sentences and things like that. Now I'm going to start prepping the write on units for the first eight weeks of school. So that's my job next.